spends all day up on that scaffold, spreading paint across the stone. Bandits grow like mushrooms in the dark when their attention is elsewhere. It feels like it's been forever since we started her painting. When will it be finished? Stuck in the ice. I do not want to hear this talk from you again. Doubt is heavier than a week's snow. Forgive me, my chieftain. We will be ready for the next attempt. But this will not be an attempt. It must be done. Do you understand? My chieftain. Good. Outlander, I suppose you wish to speak? You're set on going back to the mountain? I have put my word to it. Even with the risks being so great? The risk of what? Death? It would be a worse fate to bow our heads to the challenge and say too much. Did your Warwick come from this place? No, he rallied most of our hunters from across Banyur to face the threat of the demon. But I was born here and stayed to fight the Karja when others retreated into the mountains. A few of my old warriors remained with me, those who survived. This daemon you talked about. If you are hardy enough, you can venture out and see the signs yourself. It has changed the machines, made them fiercer, stronger. But what is it? A matter for the shamans to debate. Aurea knows about this, Damon. Where would I talk to her? She does a shaman's work. That is not for the eyes and ears of others. Certainly not an Outlander's. There are other Werax in Song's Edge, too? Yes. The village has its own life, for all Banuku need trade or shelter. After the war ended, it sprang up from what was once a campsite, quick as the bloom between frosts. Perhaps it will last. Until the Karja seek war again. Well, I guess that's it then. Good. I prefer deeds to words. Right. Yeah, good to see more outlanders. We the loop got two ice. Okay, I want to learn more about how this demon affects the machines. I've got to find Maria. And to do that, I need to talk to her apprentice, who followed the river north. Delighted in sucking the marrow from our broken bones. Everywhere Banukai and her Werak fled, the ravenous tribe were never far behind. Seeking a way to defeat them, Banukai went into the wastes and let the wind whip her cheeks. And when the cold. No, no, no. Many of you in the cut. Not since the war. 
Days and nights until she arrived at a temple built in sparkling ice. At the gates of the temple, she was met by the machines from her dream. Who bowed to the machines? Inside, Banukai discovered the blue, bubbling from a hole in the small like a spray. You bid me come, she said. My people need aid. When will you provide it? The machines whispered to Banukai. Spend a week in the cut, then go home to tell your friends how tough you are. I can't feel my... I can't feel much of anything in this. So, machines in the South suffer their own sort of corruption. I wonder what sort of challenge they present. Bandits in the cut. Quite a view you've got up here. It's a useful perspective. How fleeting we are when the world is so wide. From up here, you can see how the light paints across the land, ever changing. That's a lesson. All our marks will pass. That outlook sounds a little depressing for a painter. Haven't met many artists, have you? Song's Edge needs new stories. I scrubbed its past off this rock to start anew, but a new start needs new colors, fresh pigments like none have seen. The Banuk rock paintings are impressive, but, um... You want to know what they mean? That's not the right question, but... I'll answer anyway. Some are called to the machines. The sacred shapes you see on metal casings, or on a cauldron door. Do the machines listen to the call? I don't know. Others, like mine, are called to the tribe. You could say... Inspiration or prophecy. And sometimes even men listen, if the painting is loud enough. These pigments you want, where should I look for them? Salts gather at the edges of geysers and hot pools. Crystals cling to the rocks and cliffs. Have you always been a painter? I've always painted. But I wasn't a painter until I was driven out of Banur. Up there, the markings are eternal. They paint over the same lines, the same colors, over and over. As a child, I learned from copying them. As I grew, my heart sank at the familiarity. All of us Banuk might as well be trapped in glacier ice. We have the look of life, but never really moving. I'll see what I can find for you. Seek out the vibrant ones. A spring of sudden color among snow or rock or metal. That's its own reward. But I'd reward you as well. to turn around.
free to listen and learn. When the old ones were Always. fresh in their graves and our numbers were still small. After all the mad sun came, what is true to sleep? We were meant to trust the Karja now. Stonehill used to be a pleasant place. But now that those bandits have gotten their paws on it. These these things that killed our hunters, how, how many of them it have already poured into the cut? ground? May the blue light guide you. For a tent, I can take with me. Thank you. My bowl of red dye. I know someone must have it. Come on. A hard truth best learned early. The songs of the least distinguished runners. Sakuli will want this. up. Tuck that away.
Everything's in peak. What brings you, Karja, so far from your home? There's good machine hunting in the cut. Danger, too. Some have a taste for both, and they pay people like me well to guide them. We've had a bad run this time, even after I brought this priest along to read the signs. I did say the sun's light was cast quite red the night of the... Not your concern, though, Huntress. May your arrows find their mark. Have been here working I don't think I can help you. A shadow on the Mesa. The Asarama are newcomers. Now that Prince Edaman has returned to Meridian, is the war well and truly over? It was Duval. He tried to kill the Sun King. I tell you, we never have children if you can avoid it. Urban said Araya's apprentice went north of the river. Hopefully not too far.
That must be no kook, looking out at that tower. It looks like it's sending out a pulse or signal. Interesting. Maybe I could override it. Naltuk? Who are you? How did you find me? Bergrind told me you'd be out here. He's persistent. I've told that Asaram a thousand times. I don't need to buy anything. And I'm not selling. I just need to find Araya. Well, you won't. She's gone where only shamans can tread. She seeks guidance from the voice in the blue light. That is her task. And the task she gave me is to observe the daemon's work. To stop it spreading, if I can. But what can I do about these towers? In only a few weeks, they've sprouted throughout the cut. The daemon's energy pulses from them. Rallies the machines, even repairs them. Aratok said this daemon was... frenzying machines? Look there. Those with the purple markings. They belong to the daemon. They're stronger, more dangerous. I've seen something like this before. A corruption. But it wasn't from your daemon. You have? Well, then you know more than I do. These towers, were they part of your corruption? No. Those are new to me, too. Like I said, they empower the daemon's machines. They must be stopped. Will you tell me where Aurea went? You ask a lot of questions. Only when I'm not getting the answers I need. There's but one voice Soraya wants to hear right now, and it isn't yours. I'm sorry. All right. You want to stop the spread of the daemon's work? I know how to get started. With my bow and spear. Outlander, wait. Won't you tell me your name? Aloy. Good. If you fall to the daemon's machines, at least I can properly recount your efforts to Aurea. Thanks for the vote of confidence. But I won't fall. And when I'm done, you're gonna tell me where she is.
We should speak. I'll find a use for you. Seems I can take care of the machines and towers. The daemon's next. You claimed its power for yourself somehow. Perhaps Aurea should meet you after all. But what she truly seeks is hope. After what I just saw, you could show her that. She's in retreat beyond those mountains, the ice rasps. You'll have to walk the shaman's path to get there. You'll know you've reached the end when you come to a shrine, a great machine covered in blue gleam. Shamans who complete the path take a piece of it as reward. If you make it that far, you should too. You'll have earned it. Were you with Aurea when they attacked the mountain? I wish I had been, even with all that happened. I'm no warrior, though, so she bid me wait. When Aurea and the chieftain returned, I saw them argue bitterly. I don't know what about exactly. Then she came to me, gave me my task, and left us. Bergen told me you're Aurea's apprentice. In her absence, I served the chieftain and his Werak as an advisor, a scout, a speaker for the blue light. A lot of responsibilities. I don't know if I can live up to Aurea's example, but I have to try. I owe her that much. She took a chance on me, an aspiring shaman from the edge of the world. No one else would. You said something about blue gleam at the end of the shaman's path? A crystal that builds on the bodies of machines in the oldest ice. We Banuk believe it's the stuff of the blue light, frozen as it escapes their shells. You might be more interested that merchants will trade well for it. How do I cross this shaman's path? Go to the ice rasps. Then follow the markers through the ice caves and the waterfalls, and make the climb to the shrine. But be careful. The path is meant to be an ordeal, the final trial of a young shaman's training. And I'll find Aurea at the end of it? No. She goes further up, somewhere inside the mountain. If you see her, would you tell her? I have faith she will hear the voice again. All right, I guess I'm off to the ice rasps to find this shaman's path. <laughs>